Hello dear students, welcome to the class on Alpha Blockers. Myself Dr. Padmanabha, TS, Faculty of Pharmacology at PESU IMSR Bangalore. So let us understand the importance of Alpha Blockers. So in this session, we will going to see regarding the classification of Alpha Blockers uses of alpha blockers and the adverse effects of alpha blockers. So moving on to the classification. So the alpha adrenergic blocking drugs means these are the drugs which will going to block the alpha mediated activity, alpha receptor mediated actions will be blocked. Anywhere in the body any action or the effects which are mediated by alpha receptors will be blocked by this group of drugs. So this can be classified into non-equilibrium type. So here you have an example of phenoxybenzamine and next you have a equilibrium type and equilibrium type is also called as competitive type of antagonism and here again equilibrium type is classified into non-selective and a selective. Under non-selective you have got ergot alkaloids, example is ergotamine and ergotoxins and we have a hydrogenated ergot alkaloids that is dihydroergotamine and dihydroergotoxin and we have a imidazolin under this you have got phentolamine and miscellaneous group you have a chlorpromazin which will going to block the alpha receptor as well. So under selective ones alpha 1 selective blockers you have got prazosin terazosin, doxazosin, alphazosin, tamsulosin and psilodosin. All this group of drugs you can notice here they ends with zosin, zosin, sin, sin. So prazosin, terazosin, doxazosin, alphazosin, tamsulosin and psilodosin, psilodosin. And one more group of drug is the alpha 2 selective blocker that is euhombin. So from this slide the two things you should remember as the two things you should remember as the phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine. So phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine are the non-selective alpha blocking drugs. Why they are called non-selective phenoxybenzamine and the phentolamine are non-selectively block the alpha receptors. That means to say they block both alpha 1 as well as alpha 2 receptors. There is no selectivity towards blocking the receptor mediated actions. Whereas alpha 1 selective means these are the drugs which will only block the alpha 1 receptor mediated actions. Is that clear? Okay, fine. Moving on to the what are all the effects that can be mediated by blocking the alpha receptors. Whenever you block the alpha receptors, as you know that alpha 1 receptor is predominantly located in the vascular smooth muscles. So whenever you block the alpha 1 activity, what will happen to the alpha 1 activity which is present in the vascular smooth muscles? So initially if you activate the alpha 1 receptors, the blood vessel used to contract and produce vasoconstriction whereas by blocking the alpha 1 receptors now the contraction is reduced there will be an opposed action of the beta 2 activity in the vascular smooth muscles. So what will the beta 2 activation leads to? Beta 2 activation leads to vascular smooth muscle relaxation leading to vasodilation. So vasodilation is in turn in turn lead to reduction in the peripheral vascular resistance which lead to pooling of the blood, peripheral pooling of the blood which in turn lead to decrease in the venous return as well as decrease in the cardiac output finally leading to fall in the blood pressure. So what is the end action of blocking the alpha 1 receptor in the blood vessel? So you will have a fall in blood pressure that the individual will go for hypotension, hypotension. So whenever a individual who consumes the alpha blocker, he stands up. 
so what will happen there will be marked fall in the blood pressure there is marked hypotension will occur and this will be identified through the symptoms like dizziness and the syncope and at this point of time you need to remember one of the greatest scientists uh, or the pharmacologist sir henry dale so he was the one who proposed the concept of vasomotor reversal of dale phenomenon so that means whenever you give a alpha uh, agonist what will happen with respect to the blood pressure so at the high concentration they predominantly act on the alpha 1 receptor leading to increase in the blood pressure when the concentration of the alpha agonist or the any catecholamine comes down the beta 2 receptors will be very sensitive and beta 2 will be activated in the blood vessel leading to vasodilation that leads to fall in the blood pressure so whenever you give a, a adrenergic drugs or the alpha agonist you will going to see a biphasic response so initial rise in the blood pressure and subsequently fall in the blood pressure which are mediated by alpha 1 receptor as well as beta 2 receptor activation respectively so whenever you give a alpha blockers so what will happen to the effect of the uh, adrenaline on the blood pressure so whenever you give a alpha blocker all this alpha 1 mediated action so what it was mediating it was mediating to increase the blood pressure by acting on the alpha 1 receptors so once you give a alpha blocker the alpha activity is blocked alpha activity is abolished and there will be only exaggerated beta 2 activation and exaggerated beta 2 activation will lead to profound fall in the blood pressure profound fall in the blood pressure due to increased beta 2 activation this is called as vasomotor reversal of dale so whenever you give a alpha blocker there will be abolition of the so there will it will going to abolish the pressure action that is the vasoconstrictor action which are mediated by the adrenaline through the alpha 1 receptors on the blood vessels so only fall in blood pressure will be seen once you give a alpha blockers due to the beta 2 activation so beta 2 activation will lead to vasodilation of the vascular in the uh, uh, there will be relaxation of the vascular smooth muscles leading to the vasodilation so whenever there is a fall in blood pressure the problem here is the, there will be compensatory mechanism that will be activated and fall in blood pressure fall in mean arterial blood pressure will lead to reflex tachycardia reflex tachycardia and also at the same time there will be increased release of the norepinephrine from the synaptic nerve terminals what is the uh, 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 reason for increase in the norepinephrine release from the synaptic nerve terminals and that can activate the alpha 1 as well as beta 1 receptor at the respective places to cause vasoconstriction as well as reflex tachycardia so whenever you give a alpha blocker the first thing you should remember is there will be fall in the blood pressure the fall in the blood pressure in turn will lead to reflex tachycardia so why reflex tachycardia is occurring means here you are block blocking the alpha 2 receptors which are present in the presynaptic junction so what is the function of the alpha 2 activation alpha 2 activation will lead to inhibition of the catecholamine release norepinephrine release from the sympathetic nerve terminals so since you activate it will block the release since you are blocking the alpha 2 receptors now what will happen that inhibitory effect will be will be taken out so once the inhibitory effect on the release is taken out there will be increased release of norepinephrine and norepinephrine can act on the beta 1 receptor present in the cardiac system can lead to reflex tachycardia and in the nose it can cause nasal stuffiness in the eye since it is an alpha blocker what it causes as you know that in the eyes you have got two iris muscles that is the radial radial muscle fibers as well as the circular muscle fibers on the circular muscle fibers you have got which receptors you have got muscarinic receptor that is the m3 receptors m3 receptors and then the radial muscle fibers you have got the uh, alpha 1 receptors 
since you are blocking the alpha 1 receptors the the muscarinic activity will be more so the circular fibers will be activated by the m3 receptors leading to the contraction of the uh, sphincter pupillae or the circular muscle fibers of the iris leading to meiosis that means there will be pupillary constriction so pupil size will reduce so what happens when you give a phenylephrine phenylephrine will cause the pupillary constriction pupillary constriction so this is called as the this is called as the pupillary constriction which is mediated by the phenylephrine phenylephrine by blocking the alpha 2 receptors in the iris uh, radial muscle fibers you are activating the muscarinic activity which is present on the circular muscles of the iris leading to pupillary constriction the size of pupil will come down so what happens to the intestinal motility so intestinal motility will increase due to the partial inhibition in, in the relaxant sympathetic activity so usually what happens the cholinergic system uh, on the intestine the cholinergic system or the parasympathetic nervous system will going to activate and increase the contraction of the intestinal smooth muscles so whereas in the sympathetic activity it will have a relaxant effect so here alpha blockers will cause the inhibition to the relaxant activity produced by sympathetic nervous system thereby relaxation will be decreased that means to say intestinal motility will increase so fall in blood pressure will have a very important significant uh, effect on some of the organs one such organ will be your kidney so whenever there is a fall in blood pressure there will be reduced blood flow to the renal system the renal blood vessels or the renal system will receive a lesser blood supply and in turn that will lead to reduction in the glomerular filtration rate once the GFR is reduced what will happen to the sodium water so the body tries to conserve the sodium and water and sodium and water will be reabsorbed so what happens whenever there is a reabsorption of sodium and water there will be sodium and water retention and this activity will be reinforced by reflex increase in the renin release from the juxtaglomerular cells through the activation of beta 1 receptors so since you have blocked alpha receptors beta activity will be more so this activity will be reinforced by the activation of the beta 1 receptor present in the juxtaglomerular cells which lead to the release of renin further leading to increase in the release of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 formation leading to increase in the blood pressure increase in the blood pressure so what will happen to the tone of the bladder neck or the tone in the sphincter tone of the prostate smooth muscles so usually alpha will activation will lead to increase in the bladder neck tone as well as sphincter tone will be increased bladder sphincter tone will be increased and prostatic contraction will occur so here by blocking the alpha receptor the tone of the bladder neck or the sphincter or the prostatic smooth muscle contraction will be reduced and you are making the urine to flow out very freely and you improve the urinary flow rate in case of benign prostatic hyperplasia patient where there will be obstruction to the flow of urine because of the increased tone in the bladder neck or the bladder trigon and the sphincter in the bladder neck will be relaxed by giving a alpha blockers and also the prostatic hyperplasia will not occur because of the alpha 1 blocker thereby you are going to have some beneficial effect in case of treating benign prostatic hyperplasia the main uh, 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 voiding symptoms will be improved and thereby it there won't be any residual urine which will be left out so basically these drugs will going to improve the urine flow and they improve the voiding symptoms in case of benign prostatic hyperplasia individuals and as you know that alpha 1 activation is required for ejaculation 
alpha blocker will lead to inhibition of the ejaculation and can lead to impotence. Next coming to the some of the drugs. So in this session let us understand a very important drugs like phenoxybenzamine, pantolamine and the alpha 1 uh, selective blockers like prazosine, terazosine, doxazosine and the tamsulosine etc. So phenoxybenzamine is a non-selective blockers it is a non-equilibrium type or irreversible type of alpha blocker it is a non-selective irreversible type of alpha blocker and its action will stay for around three to four days uh, why it stays for three to four days and because it because of their longer acting and irreversible type of blockage and to prepare a fresh receptor it requires a time so that till fresh receptors are synthesized it will produce the blocked effect so when you compare the vasodilation it has got the venodilation sorry it is the venodilation which is more predominant compared to the arterial dilation and this will be responsible for the postural fall in the blood pressure which the patient will have symptoms like dizziness headache and burying of vision etc. So the side effect will be postural hypotension this can lead to palpitation, nasal blockage, meiosis and inhibition of ejaculation. So what are the uses of phenoxybenzamine? Phenoxybenzamine are used before surgery as well as during surgery to control the hypertensive crisis which occurs due to the excessive release of the catecholamines. Uh, 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 due to the adrenal tumor a condition which is called as pheochromocytoma where there will be a adrenal tumor releasing excess of catecholamines leading to hypertension. So phenoxybenzamine being a non-selective alpha blocker it will going to decrease the hypertensive crisis this can be given preoperatively as well as during the surgery to control the increased catecholamine mediated increase in blood pressure and also they can be used in case of peripheral vascular diseases where there is no organic obstruction like Burger's disease. So this can be used in case of the uh, uh, peripheral vascular diseases like Raynaud disease. Coming to the pentolamine. So pentolamine is also a non-selective one but when compared to the phenoxybenzamine pentolamine is very rapidly acting and it is of short duration of time. So rapidly acting and it acts for only short duration of time and it is a non-selective alpha blocker which blocks alpha 1 as well as alpha 2. The major difference between pentolamine and phenoxybenzamine is pentolamine is reversible whereas the, the, the phenoxybenzamine causes irreversible type of alpha receptor blockage. Again similar to that of phenoxybenzamine, pentolamine has got predominant venodilatory action compared to the arterial dilation and where we can use pentolamine, pentolamine can be made utilized for diagnosis and intraoperative management of pheochromocytoma but for the diagnosis purpose the pentolamine is not as such preferred nowadays but it can be made utilized for intraoperative management of management of hypertensive crisis due to pheochromocytoma due to the excess release of catecholamines from the adrenal tumor. Next, what are the other uses of pentolamine other than pheochromocytoma? They can be used to control hypertensive crisis or hypertension due to clonidine withdrawal, hypertension due to cheese reaction when patient is consuming MAHO inhibitor where there will be increased paramine levels which, is, which are the indirectly acting synthrothrombotic agent which can increase the risk of release of norepinephrine leading to hypertension. Tension. So please remember three uses of pentolamine. One is in the pheochromocytoma. Second one is in the control of the hypertension due to clonidine withdrawal. Control of hypertension due to cheese reactions. And most suitable alpha blocker can be used for local infiltration to counteract the vasoconstriction due to extravasation of the norepinephrine or dopamine during IV infusion. IV infusion. So please uh, remember uh, uh, that the pentolamine is a drug of choice for 
the the for uh, uh, treating the uh, extravasation occurring from the norepinephrine or the dopamine infusion which can cause tissue necrosis the extravasation of the norepinephrine or the dopamine while during the iv infusion can lead to tissue necrosis surrounding to the injection so this can be prevented by administration or the local uh, uh, local infiltration can be given to prevent the tissue necrosis due to extravasation of the norepinephrine or the dopamine so there are four uses of pentolamine one is in case of pheochromocytoma second to control hypotension or uh, in case of clonidine withdrawal to control hypotension in case of cheese reaction and to overcome or counteract the extravasation of the norepinephrine dopamine which can cause tissue necrosis next we have got the prazosin which is a selective alpha blockers so prazosin is a highly selective alpha 1 blocker and all the subtypes like alpha 1a 1b 1c is blocked equally and also blocks the sympathetically mediated vaso constriction and you should remember that it do not block the alpha 2 receptor so prazosin is a highly selective alpha 1 receptor blocker when compared to pentolamine and the uh, uh, phenoxybenzamine phenoxybenzamine and pentolamine were having predominantly veno dilator action compared to the arterial dilation whereas prazosin has got arterial dilation predominantly when compared to the veno dilation so therefore the postural hypotension the risk of uh, fall in blood pressure will be very less with respect to these highly selective blockers when compared to the non selective blockers and dizziness fainting can occur that is with the prazosin if the patient taking prazosin if he stands up immediately there can be dizziness fainting due to small fall in the blood pressure and this is called as a first dose effect this first dose effect can be minimized by giving a lower doses of the prazosin as well as giving these drugs at the bed time so that all this postural hypotension related uh, side effects can be prevented so what are the side effects you can encounter with prazosin similar to the top the the pentolamine you can have neosis nasal stuffiness inhibition of ejaculation and all these things are mild and also it has got one more activity it uh, one more mechanism prazosin will inhibit the phosphodiesterase activity so once it inhibit the phosphodiesterase activity it increases the levels of the cyclic amp in the smooth muscles leading to vaso dilation which is very very beneficial in 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 terms of treating the hypertension so what are the uses of prazosin they can be used as a anti hypertensive drugs they can be used in peripheral vascular diseases like raynaud disease and also in case of benign prostatic hyperplasia so if we consider a case of if a patient comes your clinic with the symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia associated with hypertension the preferred drug in such individuals bph with hypertension will be your prazosin and next you have a terazosin so it has got similar action to that of the prazosin but the difference is terazosin is highly it has got high oral bioavailability and it is longer acting drug it may act for more than 24 hours and because of the longer duration of action it can be given as a single daily dose and very important advantage of terazosin over prazosin is terazosin uh, 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 will promote the prostate apoptosis prostate apoptosis which are very useful in 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 treating benign prostatic hyperplasia and next we have a doxazosin again it is a longer acting drug it acts for 18 uh, hours whereas terazosin will act for more than 12 hours to 24 hours and doxazosin is a congener of prazosin and where it is used again it is used in the treatment of hypertension bph etc and next we have a alfazosin so all should remember that this terazosin and doxazosin has got very important additional property other than blocking the alpha 1 receptor they also cause prostatic apoptosis prostatic apoptosis and also the prazosin has got additional activities that is the phosphodiesterase 
the inhibition leading to increase in cyclic AMP and vascular smooth muscle dilation. Coming to alpha zosin, alpha zosin is a short acting drug which remains for three to five hours. It has got three to five hours of half life and it is a prozosin congener. Again, they are used in the treatment of the DPH and it has got non-selective action, non-selective alpha 1A, 1B, 1D action and it is not approved for treatment in hypertension. Alpha zosin is preferred in BPH but not in case of hypertension. So this drug should be avoided in uh, along with the ketoconazole, erythromycin and ritonavir because of their drug interactions. Coming to the tamsulosin, a very important drug when you compare with the prazosin, tamsulosin has got very unique action. So prazosin was blocking all those alpha 1A, alpha 1B and alpha 1D. So this tamsulosin is particularly blocking the alpha 1A receptors, alpha 1A, 1D receptors. So tamsulosin is called as uroselective alpha 1A, 1D blocker and they are useful in treating the benign prostatic hyperplasia which improves the urinary voiding symptoms and their effectiveness can be similar to that of or efficacious to that of terazosin. And one more disadvantage of tamsulosin is adva main advantage here is the specificity. They block the alpha 1A receptor in the which are predominantly present on the trigone of the urinary bladder in the prostatic smooth muscle as well in, as well as in the sphincter of the bladder. But if they lack the prostatic apoptotic property which are mediated by terazosin and the doxazosin. And they do not significantly change the blood pressure or the heart rate uh, when compared to that of the prazosin. So prazosin was reducing the blood pressure because it has got advantage. What is the advantage? It was increasing the cyclic AMP level by inhibiting the phosphodiesterase enzyme le uh, level thereby it causes vasodilation which are very important in terms of controlling the blood pressure. But that such type of activity is not seen with the tamsulosin. So tamsulosin does not have any significant change uh, in the blood pressure or heart rate. So if a patient comes to your clinic with uh, symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia without hypertension, without hypertension, so drug of choice you should prefer is the tamsulosin. If the patient comes to your clinic with the uh, symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia with hypertension, then you should go for prazosin because prazosin has got dual advantage in terms of the improving the voiding symptoms of BPH as well as decreasing the uh, hypertension or decreasing the blood pressure. Whereas tamsulosin has got only advantage in uh, improving the voiding symptoms associated with BPH but not it will not going to decrease the blood pressure. So, so what are the side effects again postural hypotension is, uh, is very minimal or infrequent whereas postural hypotension can occur with prazosin but it can be minimized by giving a lower doses and, and at the bedtime. So postural hypotension is infrequent dizziness is infrequent, it can cause retrograde ejaculation. Please remember one of the unique or specific side effect of tamsulosin is it causes retrograde ejaculation. And also very important, if the patient is uh, 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 taking tamsulosin and undergoes cataract surgery, there will be high risk of floppy iris syndrome. So two, two unique side effects associated with tamsulosin is it can cause retrograde ejaculation as well as in case of cataract surgery undergoing patients, it will cause floppy iris syndrome, floppy iris syndrome. So coming to the psilodosin, again psilodosin is a selective alpha 1A blocker and it produces little change in the blood pressure. No change is expected in case of tamsulosin, but psilodosin will have some changes and it causes less postural hypotension. Side effects will be Failure of the ejaculation which will be very frequent when compared to compare, uh, to the tamsulosin which will lead to sexual distress. So coming to the overall uses of the alpha blockers, alpha blocker can be used in the treatment of uh, the pheochromocytoma which is a adrenal, adrenal tumor secreting excess of catecholamines which will lead to hypertension. So giving alpha blocker will going to control the hypertension and 
other hypertensive crisis uh, side effects. So it can be used in hypertension, hypertension developed due to clonidine withdrawal, hypertension due to the cheese reaction due to excess of tyramine release, etc. So it can be used in improving the symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia. So only it controls the tone of the, the prostate or the bladder trigon or the sphincter. But the size of the size of the uh, benign pr prostate will be controlled by 5 alpha reductase inhibitor that is phenosteroid and butasteroid. So to control the dynamic state, dynamic state that is the tone of the uh, prostate or the bladder to control the dynamic system, you need to go for the alpha blocker to control the static component. You need to go with the 5 alpha reductase inhibitor. So under BPH two things you should remember. So one is there is a static component, one is a dynamic component. Dynamic component is controlling the tone. So you need to reduce the tone. To reduce the tone or the dynamic component, you need to give a alpha blockers. To control the static that is increasing the size static component, you need to give a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor that is butasteroid or the phenosteroid that will reduce the size. Is that clear? Fine. Next, it, they are useful in case of peripheral vascular diseases and also there is a papaverin or pantolamine induced penile erection therapy for the treatment of impotence. Apart from that, just we will have a little bit brief uh, 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 explanation about pheochromocytoma treatment. Pheochromocytoma is a adrenal medullary tumor where it produces excess of catecholamine release and this will lead to intermittent or persistent hyper Tension. So diagnosis can be made with the help of urinary estimation of catecholamine metabolite that is VMA and a normeta nephrins. So pantolamine test can be done, pantolamine when injected, if there is a fall in blood pressure more than 35 millimeter of mercury with respect to systolic blood pressure and if the diastolic blood pressure falls more than 25 millimeter of mercury, it confirms that the patient has got pheochromocytoma. But these tests is obsolete now because of their non-reliable because it produces false positive and false negative results. So what will be the first line treatment? First line treatment will, will be a surgical removal of the adrenal medullary tumor. If the adrenal medullary tumor excision is not possible, in case of inoperable cases, you can go with phenoxybenzamine. Alternative will be your prazosin and pentolamine. So oral phenoxybenzamine can be given one to two weeks prior to surgery before surgery preoperatively to control the, the, the catecholamine mediated hyper alpha mediated vasoconstriction and it can be infused IV during surgery. So before surgery you are going to give it through the oral route, during the surgery you are going to give it through the intravenous route to control the intraoperative related hypertensive crisis. So moving on to the summary, we have come to the end of this session. So you need to remember we talked about the classification, the broad classification you should remember is a non-selective and a selective. Under non-selective you have got two drugs phenoxybenzamine and pentolamine and under selective you have got alpha 1 selective and alpha 2 selective. And again alpha 1 you have got the non-selective ones like uh, uh, the prazosin, terazosin, they does not have subtype non-specificity. Whereas tamsulosin has got a subtype specificity where it will going to block the alpha 1A receptors. On the other hand, when you compare phenoxybenzamine and the pentolamine which are non-selective, so phenoxybenzamine is an irreversible type of blocker whereas pentolamine is a reversible type of blocker. And we talked about the uses, the major use is in case of the, 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 uh, the conditions where there is a alpha 1 receptor mediated actions like they can be used in treatment of pheochromocytoma, inoperable, inoperable cases of pheochromocytoma, hypertension due to the due to the clonidine withdrawal, due to the cheese reactions in case of BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, mainly it controls the dynamic component of the BPH, peripheral vascular disorders and also in case of impotency. Apart from that, the major side effects of these drugs will be your postural hypotension. Postural hypotension 
will be the side effect. Uh, uh, the partial hypotension is very less with respect to the tamsulosin. So this was all about the alpha blocker. Before completing this session, let us see the unique side effects produced by the tamsulosin. Apart from postural hypotension which is less with respect to the tamsulosin, it can cause retrograde ejaculation and also it can cause floppy iris syndrome during the cataract surgery if the patient is taking tamsulosin. And two important cases you should remember is if a patient comes to your clinic with BPH with hypertension, you need to go for prozosin which has got the additional vasodilation property because of the increased cyclic KMP by inhibiting the phosphodiesterase enzyme activity. So it can be beneficial in terms of treating BPH as well as hypertension. If the patient comes to your clinic with only BPH without any hypertension, then you can go for the tamsulosin. Tamsulosin has got a lesser or no significant effect on the blood pressure. If you give a prazosin in a case of BPH without hypertension, what will be the risk you are going to identify? The risk you can foresee is the patient will go for postural hypotension, postural hypotension. So again, postural hypotension, very, very careful. You should be very, very careful. It can be prazosin induced postural hypotension can be reduced by, by uh, 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 having some measures like giving a lower doses as well as giving these drugs at the at the bedtime at the bedtime so this was all about the alpha blockers so hope you have understood the importance and relevance of alpha blockers in clinical practice thank you